After defeating Andy Roddick at the previous Wimbledon Championships, Federer was aiming to prevent the American from realigning the power balance. The most physically gifted player I've played against, but with that, he's just become so solid mentally. I told him before, I'd love to hate you, but you're really nice. You just have to sit back and say too good sometimes. L'erreur serait aussi de, de croire que tout est venu de ce talent. Euh, un talent n'est rien s'il n'y a pas une dose énorme de travail. The conditioning of a champion. The hours spent on the practice court rack up. The limbs ache, but the will to win never dies. Simply put, Federer's focus on winning sets him apart from the rest. Qui est le patron de ses capacités mentales. C'est tout simplement comme ça que vous utilisez le travail que vous faites pour vous renforcer aussi mentalement. Quand vous avez fait un exercice qui est dur, alors vous savez si vous avez réussi cet exercice, c'est aussi une réponse positive pour le mental. Alors dans ce contexte-là, il peut y avoir un lien entre le physique et le mental, mais il y a aussi un, beaucoup de liens entre la façon de jouer et la façon de s'exprimer sur le corps. C'est un ensemble, c'est un puzzle, le mental, le tennis et le physique. New York, a city famed for its unpredictability and brashness. The scene for one of Federer's most focused finals. Roger would return to the city that takes no prisoners as defending champion and would battle for the US Open title against one of the game's most illustrious champions. The final that sticks out for me, of course, would be the Agassi final. And that he played Roger was very fitting and symbolic. And I think Roger managed to handle the crowd, which was completely against him, and uh, handled it with a lot of uh, dignity and, and a lot of uh, composure. I recall after that final, uh, Andre said, uh, I've been disappointed in the past when I've lost matches like this, but this time I'm really not, because at some point or another you have to admit the obvious, and that's just that you're losing to a better player. Having played against Sampras and Becker and Edberg, Lendl and McEnroe as well, that's quite a statement. Being called one of the greatest of all time usually requires a lifetime's work. Federer was receiving such praise aged just 24. If proof is required of Federer's dominance week in, week out, look no further than his performances at the Masters series. Of his 50-plus singles titles, currently 14 of them have been won on this illustrious tour, where the elite of tennis face each other. His consistency at winning on a global scale has ensured Federer has kept the number one spot every week for the past four years, surpassing the previous record held by Jimmy Connors. Federer is on course to being the biggest record breaker of all time. From Houston to Shanghai, his dominance at the end of season Masters Cup is perfection personified. Private moments of contemplation on court, the calm facade disguises the fire within. The burning desire to succeed, to challenge history, to be called a champion. Federer started 2006 in top gear, turning up the heat against Marcos Bagdatis in the first Grand Slam of the season. Federer's determination, allied with his killer instinct, 
was now familiar to the watching world, and it was leaving us wanting more. On a stage full of history, the presence of another great champion, Rod Laver, was not lost on Federer. Roger's very emotional about tennis. He's interested in the history. I've experienced this time and time again. How he's very inquisitive. He's, he wants to know as much as possible uh, about the legends of the past in the game. And uh, I think this was also the reason why uh, he became so emotional. I think he's even comfortable how great he is. Um, you know, probably talking about it and being compared with me and Laver and just the history of the game. I think he's pretty humble. There's something different about about Federer. I, I just think he is bigger and better than than anyone else that I've seen. Later that year at Wimbledon, Federer fended off all challenges to his crown dropping just a single set. When it comes to the big, big moment, he has that extra gear and that extra belief that he's going to win. He had his fourth Wimbledon title, elevating him to new heights, only reached by a select few at his favorite tournament. I've always felt very welcome um, at the club, to be honest. I've gotten into this um, very close bond with the tournament, you know, with Tim Phillips, everybody who worked at, at Wimbledon, they make me feel very, very much at home. Um, and then the crowds, obviously, they've always been very respectful. It's very nice to play in such an ambiance, you know, it's such a nice feeling, you know, and uh, so I've always respected that uh, very, very much. And I think people feel that, you know, I don't try to put on a show. I try to go out there and play my best tennis, try to create some some magical shots if I can, you know, if it doesn't work out, you know, at least I gave 100% and I think that that's what the, the English people really enjoy. Federer is a living legend at Wimbledon, something that Roger and the club are equally proud of. Hello, welcome Hello. to the museum. Thanks very much. <laughs> and I think we're going to go this way. We're very proud to have him as the Wimbledon I champion. Like we like to think we're, as it were, the best of tennis. We try to create the best stage for the, these athletes to perform. And I think Roger is an exceptional ambassador for the game of tennis all that is best about tennis. He is very natural, very pleasant, and I get on extremely well with him.